Hi, today we are in the city of Rancho Santa Margarita, Orange County, California. And on our sidewalks here, right, also out in our median, we have a very popular tree. This is called a jacaranda. In English, of course, it's known as a jacaranda. And there's 49 different species of jacaranda. This one here is called a blue jacaranda. It comes to us from Bolivia and Argentina, but also Peru and Brazil. It is a common ornamental plant from California to Florida and Hawaii, where they flower from June to July, and in Australia and South Africa, where they flower from November to December. And there are huge jacaranda festivals each year in Grafton, Australia, and Pretoria, South Africa, usually around Christmas time. So this tree can grow up to 50 feet tall. It's used as a standalone plant along sidewalks, xeriscape gardens, and urban settings. But the roots are very aggressive, so don't plant these too close to structures or by your swimming pools or ponds or water features. So they not only get damaged from the roots, but the mess from the leaves and the flowers and the seeds. So our blue jacaranda here, it goes by the scientific name, Hacaranda mimosifolia, and the genus Hacaranda comes from an old Brazilian Aboriginal word, which means fragrant, aromatic, or scented. And the species, mimosifolia, it comes from two combined words which mean mimosa leaves or mimosa-like leaves since it has fern-like leaves we find on mimosa plants. So that's how we get Acaranda mimosifolia or an aromatic flowering tree with fern-like mimosa leaves. So a couple of things about this tree. It is considered invasive. It outcompetes other plants. It's deciduous so it sheds its leaves each year. In some areas, it might be more like a semi-evergreen. It's got a nice defined trunk, spreading limbs, moderately branched. It starts out as a round shape as a small tree, but grows into more of a canopy later in life. A little bit asymmetrical or uneven. Lives about 150 to 200 years old, but they do get very messy when the leaves, the flowers, and the seeds drop. In fact, you can get something called jacaranda sludge, which is a big brown mush that forms under the trees. They get super slippery when they're on the sidewalks. All right, so it's a little busy here, so I'm gonna to go to the post office. We'll get a close up of one of our less busy uh, Hakaranda jacaranda trees, all right? All right, so I made it to the post office. A little bit quieter here. Here we have another jacaranda. Let's take a look at the trunk and the roots the limbs and branches, and then um, we'll talk about the flowers, seed pods, and how to take care of this plant, all right? So the roots here, okay, so they're pretty aggressive, and they're surface roots for about the first two feet underground, and they extend out about 30 feet from each tree, or basically the width of the canopy. So if you get it too close to sidewalks, or the street, you can cause some uh, damage from the roots. Okay, and the bark here is this grayish brown bark. It's thick and it's straight. Peels off pretty easily. Now when it's young, the bark is actually originally smooth, but it gets real scaly and rough with age, and then it gets these little shallow grooves in the bark. So it's pretty good Pretty cool bark overall. And the limbs, now it's moderately branched. Okay, this one's pretty full, like it hasn't been trimmed. So they're moderately uh, branched out. Here's some new branches down here, you can see coming in. And the limbs, uh, they kind of appear to go out in like random directions, okay? So you gotta prune it a little bit and very carefully if you wanna keep a nice shape. And the branches, they have a gray-brown color. And the twigs, right, they're very, um, very slender and new. And the leaves here, we'll take a look at some of the leaves. Okay, I'm gonna pull this off. All right, we'll get a better look. Okay, so the leaves here, they uh, alternate up the stem. One here, one here, one here, one here. As they work themselves up to the top, they're about 18 uh, inches long. This one here is probably uh, about 12 inches. 
and they're bipinnately compound. So each leaf, this is a full leaf, right? It's got about 13 or maybe up to 31 of these little offshoots. They're called pinnae. And each pinnae has about 10 to 41 little leaflets. And they're green. And they're about a half inch long, these little leaflets here. All right, so let's take a look at the flowers here. This is a pretty low one I can get to. Okay, now this tree will start blooming flowers after about eight to 10 years. And the colors, they vary. A bluish purple, lilac purple, lavender blue, or even a mauve color. And there's even a white flowering hybrid. So they appear in clusters in these panicles about 18 inches long. And they're tubular shaped flowers. You pull one off here. All right, so it's a tubular fl shaped flower. Now each flower is about one to two inches. So the trees are hermaphroditic, which means the flowers have both male and female parts in them, which includes the pistils, stigma, ovaries, stamens, anthers, and pollen. In these trees, they flower best when you have a cold snap or a cold winter, and then a nice warm spring. And they're great at attracting bees. And then the um, flowers will form seed pods, here like we have here. A couple seed pods. All right, and they're flat, sort of disc shape, about two inches wide. And they uh, blow away in the breeze or they fall on the ground. You open them up, these guys already shedded their individual seeds, but they'll be packed with uh, individual seeds inside. So that's the fruit of this tree. All right, so for care and maintenance, always plant these guys in full sun. They do not like low temperatures or frost. If it gets down to 25 degrees Fahrenheit, you're gonna see some damage, but it can tolerate high temperatures up to 104 degrees Fahrenheit with almost no effect. And the soil, okay, take a look at the soil here. Okay, it likes uh, minimum watering, likes well-drained soil, and it's best not to water these guys until you get about two or three inches of dry soil on top. Then you water them, otherwise you're going to waterlog the roots, and the roots like to be breathing a lot or uh, we'll call it aerated okay so it likes uh, sandy soil not clay or silt because that holds too much water and for pruning for the first 10 to 15 years you prune these trees to get your shape you want but after that people say don't prune them at all but if you have to prune them what you want to do is you want to prune the top layers and start to spike up or upwards, and that way you get a nice canopy effect, all right, that you want from these plants sometimes. And then um, for pests and diseases, well, there's no serious problems with pests, okay? It's a very highly tolerant tree, but there's a few aphids or mealybugs can do some damage, but you just treat those locally and you should be fine. Now, like I said, if you uh, water too much, you might get a fungal rot, or what's called mushroom root rot in the soil, and that'll hurt the tree as well. And then for health considerations, okay, these are not toxic to humans or pets. They do not cause allergic reactions. It's been uh, used medicinally as uh, to treat your varicose veins or neuralgia. And it's got some antibiotic and antioxidant properties to help protect against bacterial infections, gonorrhea and syphilis, and especially people who are allergic to penicillin. There you go. It's our uh, jacaranda, hocaranda mimosifolia. It's a really messy tree though. And you'll notice on the ground here, it gets so messy when the leaves and the flowers and the seeds all fall. All right. So thanks for watching my video. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.